Let's face it, the planet is in trouble. One day, society will crumble, destroyed by legions of robot war machines. And it's just not easy being a girl in a post-apocalyptic world. But it can be even harder to be a man, named Monkey. The developers at Ninja Theory, known for PS3 launch title Heavenly Sword, are at it again. And they've set out to capture our attention with a cinematically driven action adventure that takes us through a hauntingly beautiful post-apocalyptic landscape. So strap on your headband, climb aboard, and prepare to be enslaved. The last major title you guys worked on was Heavenly Sword, which was awesome. Uh, what did you learn from developing that game, and how is this game different? We really just took stock of what we did on that game and wanted to make everything better. So, um, and explore new areas, because like Heavenly Sword was primarily a combat game, and we wanted a much rounder experience in, in Enslave. so combat's maybe a third of the game, and the rest is puzzle solving, uh, traversal. It's not relying on gimmicks, it's, it's, it's just about making the best possible gameplay experience and, and making that experience um, feel like it's part of an adventure. What does it mean for the people of this world to be enslaved? So the game is based on Journey to the West, which is a 400-year-old Chinese novel. And the setup for that is, is these two characters, Monkey and Tripitaka. So in this world, even though there's um, virtually no one left, there are still war machines left over from the last war. These war machines have no purpose at all, but if you trigger them, they wake up and they kill. Against this background, there are also these slave ships that come over from the west, and they capture people, they stick mind control headbands on them, and they ship them out west, and nobody knows why. And that's how we start the game, with Monkey and Trip as prisoners on this slave ship. When she gets enslaved by these slave ships and finds herself trapped, she manages to escape through her cunning. Monkey gets out because he's just a brute, so he punches his way out and gets off the ship that way. She notices that and she thinks, I'm not going to survive in this world on my own. I need a guy like that to protect me. But she knows very well that a guy like that's probably going to kill her before protecting her. That's why she's smart enough to kind of take a slave headband, stick it on his head while he's unconscious and reprogram it, forcing them to go on this journey together. He's effectively enslaved by her. Get this thing off. No. You think I'm screwing with you? You! You man, stop! Do you think you could tell me what the plan is? To get you home as fast as possible so that you can take this thing off my head and I can break your neck. I meant... Yeah, I know what you meant. As the player, you control Monkey, and priority number one is keeping Trip alive. Because if anything happens to her, that headband will pop your top like a used soda can. The city is littered with dangerous mechs, and traveling around does take some teamwork. Both of you can create diversions for the other in order to distract the baddies while planning out the next course of action. Trip can't go everywhere Monkey can, so you'll occasionally have to find some alternate routes to safely make way. He knows how to deal with mechs and robots that are left over from the last war. She doesn't. She's totally scared and out of her element. But as the journey continues, she starts to come into her own. So she can use her, her knowledge by scanning mechs to, to find out where their weaknesses are, which means that you as Monkey can go in and, and dispatch these mechs that you've not been able to dispatch before. Detecting a fault in that mech. Monkey's primary weapon is a collapsible staff that he wields quite effectively, occasionally resorting to some ground and pound to tear the mechs limb from limb. This is where Trip's tech savvy really comes in handy, with the ability to upgrade Monkey's equipment and add powerful moves to his arsenal. You can also collect range charges from Monkey's staffs to get at those hard-to-reach robots. Alex Garland, who worked on 28 Days Later, is also working on the writing for the game. How did that partnership happen? You know, as a studio, we've always thought um, the one area of gaming that just is still far behind like uh, movies is, is storytelling. So if you want to make a game that has like believable characters and dialogue and uh, story, then it makes sense to go out and find a good writer. So his insight into storytelling, it's not just the dialogue, it's, it's the way you set up cameras, it's the way you mu use music, it's the way you build tension through all these different ways. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just c calm down and tell me exactly what happened. The mother just saw. It's a dog. I can't 
can't fight it. Just, just keep still. Don't move. Now, what would all those cinematic efforts add up to if they weren't executed properly? That's where Andy Serkis, the performer behind the Lord of the Rings Gollum, comes into the picture. Hey! We didn't know at the time how to do performance capture, where you record the facial expressions, the voice, the body, and, uh, and make the characters feel real when you're playing the game. And he brought that all to the table, so he's, he's, he's not only lead as Monkey, he co-directed the whole shoot with me. Uh, help with the casting and yeah, he's been invaluable. Are you okay? When you watch a movie, you know what the characters are thinking as opposed to what they're saying. You need to capture that emotion and for that you need good actors. That's always been our philosophy and that's something we're taking forward in Enslaved. With strong foundational roots starting 400 years in the past and stretching into the most cutting edge technology of today, Ninja Theory is throwing everything they've got into this explosive action quest. That being said, it looks like the apocalypse just can't come soon enough.